80% of people fail or forget their new year resolutions by February. And although your first thought might be, well, it's because new year resolutions are stupid and we shouldn't do them, there might be a way to fix them. If you think about it, businesses do it all the time. Otherwise, there would be a lot more unhappy investors. And coming from a software engineering background, I might have just a tool for that. Is it still called a background? if I'm actively doing it right now. Let's take Tom. Tom is our imaginary person for this video and he's ready to start the new year strong from a clean slate. He sets a new year resolution to get more money in 2026. And by the end of the year, he got more money. What a happy story, isn't it? Except we all know that never happened. And in reality, the end of the story looked like this. So why, why doesn't it work? Why the absolute majority of people cannot fulfill their new year resolutions? I'm sure there are so many ways to answer this question depending on which area you're coming from, from human psychology to statistics. But what we are going to do instead, we're going to look at some software engineering practices that might shed some light to how it works. If you look closely at how Tom set his goals, you'll see that he follows the waterfall approach. It means that he sets goals in the beginning, he plans the work for the rest of the year and then he tries to follow it till the end and only in the end he gets to evaluate did he achieve the goal was it even a good goal at all this is a very linear approach and it works great for some of the areas think about maybe some medical fields or aviation where the requirements are known beforehand and the cost of the mistake is so much higher than the desire to move quickly. But in reality, for most of the applications we build, the priority is not to keep humans alive, it's to keep humans happy. A waterfall approach does not really work with that because humans tend to change their mind. In fact, if you look at the common problems with waterfall and compare them to the real world problems that stop people from achieving their goals, they are quite similar. In waterfall, you get the verification in the very end of the product lifecycle, and sometimes users are not happy and the reviews you're getting are not good, even though you just wasted months building that product. And similar in real life, sometimes you realize that you don't really want it anymore. You set your resolution to learn to play piano and then you realize that you prefer a violin. When you plan your product work 12 months in advance, you have to think about how long each phase is going to take. And sometimes your estimations are way off. Similarly, in real life, sometimes we don't really understand how much time your resolution is going to take. And also, as you can imagine, when you set the requirements up front, sometimes you're just starting with the wrong thing and your initial requirements were wrong. You assumed something that wasn't true or you had an idea that just didn't pan out. And similarly in life, sometimes what we think is a great idea when we are super excited on January 1st is not that good. And of course, one of the known business risks is when a new technology comes out and what you're building is becoming obsolete. Hello, ChatGPT. What's the similar thing in real life? Well, it can be anything from getting sick to any major life event that will turn your life upside down and make your new year resolutions completely useless. I know that I promised you a tool to fix your new year resolutions, but everything that I've said so far is just telling you that you shouldn't do new year resolutions, right? Well, not exactly. In 2001, the Agile Manifesto was born and still kept in the original form, which highlighted different approach of building software and we're going to use it for our own goals. We're going to take some of the components of Agile and apply it to a real life. Let's compare Agile and Waterfall to see what is Agile and what is this all about. In the Waterfall method, you go linearly through the phases. First, you plan your work, you set your goals and you decide what will be the outcome that you want. Then you design the work that you want, then you implement the actual code, and then you move on to the testing phase when you compare the results of the last step to the first step. In Agile, we take roughly same steps, but we do them repeatedly over the course of the product development. Instead of planning the work in advance for a year or more, we are planning the work for a short period of time. And in each period of time, we go through the cycle of designing the work implementing the code and testing it to see if it actually matches with the real life situations and our expectations and if our assumptions were right, you know, the whole thing. Shortening the whole cycle of development and making sure that the next actions are based on real feedback. 
And by feedback, I don't exactly mean user feedback. It may be the feedback from the real world or from the code itself. For example, if something was proven to be way more difficult than initially thought. And these are exactly the principles that we're going to take with us to the next part. But before we dive in into the practical part of taking a new year resolution and trying to apply it to all of this agile mindset, we want to take a look at some of the things that you need to be aware of when you use agile, because as any of the software methodologies, it's not perfect. First of all, agile is a mindset. It's just the way you approach things. And every mindset needs a framework, otherwise it's just not actionable. And the most known framework for Agile is Scrum. And it leads to the fact that Scrum and Agile are constantly mixed up. And that gives Agile a bad name because frameworks can get complicated, but more importantly, they're getting rigid. If you don't know what Scrum is, it's a set of rituals that help you align with Agile mindset in theory. You have sprints, which are fixed time windows to work on the scope usually two weeks, you have daily stand-ups where you discuss with the team the work that you are doing. You have planning in the beginning of the sprint and the retrospective in the end of the sprint to set the goals and see how the goals worked and what was the feedback from the work that you're doing so you can plan the next sprint. And in my experience, Scrum is getting out of hand very quickly because focusing on the rituals means that you're forgetting the whole idea of Agile being flexible. As an example, keeping your sprints the same length is not exactly flexible and not always needed. The second problem with Agile is that there is either no long-term vision at all or more commonly, the long-term vision is kind of lost because every time you plan your next sprint, you take new tasks into account and you build something new. And eventually your primary goal, why you started the whole project is just getting lost in the sea of new random goals that appeared gradually over the course of multiple sprints. And a third problem is, of course, it's very easy to say that you need to base your next planning on the feedback that you've gotten, but in reality, interpreting the feedback, understanding the feedback, or even gathering feedback is incredibly complicated, at least in the software world. Now that you know about all the tools, let's see how it works in practice. Let's go back to our definition of agile and replace the words from software engineering with words from real life. Instead of planning, we're going to set our goals for a period of time. Instead of designing, we're going to find a system that will help us achieve the goals. And instead of implementing, we're going to actually do the work. And instead of testing, we're going to add the review step when we look at the feedback from real life, whatever that can be, and make decisions about the next sprint. So the very first step that I'm doing for myself is to choose a long-term vision for the whole year to address one of the pitfalls of Agile, to not forget why we're doing what we're doing and what was the initial impulse that pushed us in that direction. It's important to keep it rather vague. It's not the goal, it's not the resolution, it's more of the intention that we're setting for the year. For example, a lot of the comments on this channel are talking about creating their own YouTube channel or other ways to share their work. So the long vision for that would not be create a YouTube channel because it's based on the implementation. The long-term vision would be to share your work or to become famous, whatever is your intention. The next thing we're going to do is to pick the length of the first sprint. And apparently there is such a thing as quitters day by which the majority of people are quitting their new year resolutions. And it's the second Friday of January, which is way sooner than I would have expected. But here we go. So I suggest you your first sprint to be about two weeks length, maybe even less, to avoid this quitter's day problem. And of course, you would have to break this down into smaller parts and tackle them one by one, which we're going to have in this phase of doing the actual work. And that sounds all nice and peachy, right? But you know what happens after you set the goals and before you get to review them? That's right life happens. And life usually comes with a lot of obstacles towards your goals. So in a way, you have to continue holding yourself accountable agile way. In software, we have daily stand-ups where we have to talk to other people. We have Jira boards to look at every day. So we're kind of set on this remembering about our goals. But in life, 
you have to do it yourself. The easiest thing you can do is to put it somewhere on display where you see it every day. But the caveat to that is that you have to change the format every sprint probably because you're just going to get used to seeing that piece of paper or sticky note or whatever you're using and you will start ignoring it. The other way to do it is to have weekly reviews or more often than that reviews. And another option from the top of my mind is a habit tracker on your phone for some of the goals may work quite nice. For example, if your vision is to share your work and your goal for the next two weeks sprint is to create a YouTube channel, then every day you can sit down for a few minutes and make some progress towards that and then you can use a habit tracker for that. I'm sure there are multiple other ways to hold yourself accountable and to remember that you need to work on that. And if you can think about something, just write it down in the comments. I might use some ideas. I'm sure there are a lot of people who can choose one approach and go with it for the whole year. For me, I like things to change, so I'm not getting bored of them. So I have like different strategies for different goals in different times. Let's say we got to the end of the sprint and we did not quit yet. What do we do? This is the hardest part of Agile because we need to change how we go forward based on what we did in the past. And usually you use the word reflect, but I think that the word reflect is kind of overused right now because the idea is not to think about past two weeks and what you did. The idea is to take the learning and turn it into action. And this is the toughest part of learning. The first question that I would ask myself is, is the vision still valid? Do I still want to share my work? Or maybe I made some steps and decided that I'm actually a very private person and I don't want to anymore. And this would actually be a real success if it only took you two weeks to validate your idea and realize that it's not a good idea. It means that you haven't spent 12 months in self-pity and crushing disappointment. You just got it out of your system in two weeks. Congrats. The second step is the usual looking at the results. Did you achieve the goals that you set? Did it actually work? Was it difficult? Was it easy? What are the lessons that you got from it? Maybe your vision hasn't changed, but you tried creating a YouTube channel and making a video and you realize that you hate talking to a camera and you much prefer writing blogs. And the third step is to take everything from step two and actually plan the next sprint. If you already know that you don't want to make videos, plan to publish the first vlog. If you still want to move the same direction, but you notice that you're lacking some equipment, don't forget to put that in the next sprint. Maybe you realize that you need to learn some skill. And this is where the vision comes in handy, because over the course of a few months, you may switch completely to learning that skill and forget about your initial idea to share your work. Make sure that every goal that you're setting at this point is informed by all of the learnings that you just got. Otherwise, you just wasted two weeks. And that may take some time to learn to do it, because the examples that I'm giving are pretty obvious, but if you take an example from the real life, I have a goal of publishing a video every week, and I do meet my goal, but some of the weeks are just scrambled, everything is super fast, not the way I want, not the quality that I want, and I'm not always sure what to do with these learnings. Do I learn to work faster, or do I give myself permission to work slower? Maybe I can speed up some steps. Maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should optimize some other areas of life. Maybe I can rest less. Maybe I can rest more. So in reality, it's not as clear cut as I'm making it seem in the video, but it's still 100% worth it. And it's 100% worth it to do it intentionally. And don't forget that your sprints don't need to be the same length. If you did it for two weeks and you realize that it's not enough time to gather any learnings that you can use, make the next sprint a month or maybe make it a few days if it works better for you. Agile has to be agile. That's the whole point.